No, no, this, this has to be a joke. You just witnessed how I watched a video from a YouTube channel called Tech Builder in which a candle powered USB charger was built. The shown system uses a tea light to heat up a heatsink, which is attached to one side of a Peltier module. The other side of the module is stuck to another heatsink onto which a fan is placed in order to keep it cool. Now in my opinion, this setup can output a bit of power. But let me tell you that in the Tech Builder video, the system with its tiny T light powers the fan and an LED light while simultaneously also charging a smartphone, which I think is impossible. So in this video, in order to prove that the Tech Builder project is fake, I will be creating the same system and show you how little power it outputs. And then I will be building a proper thermoelectric generator that can truly charge a smartphone. Let's get started. This video is sponsored by JLC PCB, which is a PCB company whose goal is to provide easy to create and fast to deliver prototype PCBs. Their excellent quality $2 PCBs are no short term promotion. So why not head over to their site to upload your Gerber files and order your PCBs today. To start off, let's take a look at the utilized Peltier module which is this TEC1-12726. At this point, I could tell you all about the functional principle of such a module, but since I already talked about that in a previous video, I will keep it short this time. By adding a bit of thermally conductive paste to the unlabeled side of the module, pushing it onto a heatsink and powering the module, the unlabeled side will get hot and thus slowly heat up the heatsink, while the labeled side will get cold. The cold side can even reach temperatures underneath the freezing point of water. But as the hot side gets warmer, the cold side also gets warmer, because the Peltier module can only sustain a certain temperature difference between its two sides. Now, we cannot only use electric energy to move thermal energy, but it also works the other way around. Thus, by heating up the hot side while keeping the cold side cool, we can create a voltage across the Peltier module, which we can use to power electronics. That is the basic principle of a thermoelectric generator. And with the theory out of the way, I got myself the components for the Tech Builder version of such a generator. So I created a square hole in the metal pencil holder, glued the heatsink with already attached Peltier module on top of it, and then once again use thermally conductive paste to add the second heatsink to the Peltier module. After I successfully completed the system, I lit a tea light, positioned it in place onto a small pedestal, and waited a few minutes for the lower heatsink to heat up. By using my multimeter, I was able to measure a maximum output voltage of 0.94 volts and a maximum short circuit current of 100 milliamps. Those values are certainly not enough though to charge a smartphone or even light up a small LED. But by powering the fan with an external power source and placing it on top of the system, we can in fact improve the voltage and current values quite a bit. But the only true way to power something directly with this thermoelectric generator was by heating up the hot side with a blowtorch, which was certainly not intended by the original creator. The problem is that the radiated heat of the tea lights and thus the temperature difference is simply not enough. What I think happened is that the original creator saw the 12 volts 400 watt rating of the module and thought that it should be easily possible to create the same electrical output power when using it as a generator. But just like with a powerful motor, it does not mean that you can easily get the rated values out of it as electrical energy when using it as a generator. 
But nevertheless, now that we know that the system's output capabilities are fake, let's move on to my own design. My idea is to use 6 T lights simultaneously along with 6 Peltier modules. For the hot side, I will be using a sheet of aluminum with a thickness of 3mm, while for the cold side, I will be using another aluminum sheet with a thickness of only 1.5mm, onto which I will be placing an aluminum box filled with ice water to keep everything cool. I will also be using some M5 bolts and nuts to suspend this construction in the air. So, I started by placing the 6 Peltier modules onto the thicker aluminum piece with a distance of 2cm from the left and right edge, in order to figure out the necessary dimensions for the heat sinks, which ultimately looked like this. By the way, I'm using the same type of Peltier modules from before, which are honestly quite expensive. So, you can get yourself cheaper, low current versions of them, which should also work acceptably well. But nevertheless, after I marked the outline of the heatsink onto the aluminum, I cut it out with a handsaw, removed the sharp edges with a file, marked the four holes for the M5 bolts, drilled them with a 4.5mm bit and then created an M5 thread into each of them. Next, I marked the outline for the cold side heatsink onto the thinner aluminum, in addition to a few other outlines, which were mandatory to later create the aluminum cooling box. So like before, I used a handsaw to cut out those six pieces of aluminum, whose sharp edges I then once again removed with a file. At this point, I wanted to use special aluminum solder and a blowtorch in order to create the box. But after two hours of unsuccessful solder connections, I gave up on this plan and instead used hot glue to temporarily create the box shape and then used two component adhesive to properly glue all the aluminum pieces to one another. As soon as the adhesive was dry, I removed the hot glue and finally moved on by adding heatsink plaster to the unlabeled side of the modules and pressing them onto the thicker aluminum heatsink. Next, I shortened certain wires of the modules in order to connect them all in series with a bit of solder, according to this scheme. Afterwards, I added heatsink plaster to the label side of the modules and pressed the thinner aluminum heatsink onto them. And while the plaster was drying, I got myself an M5 threaded rod, onto which I created markings with a distance of 10cm to one another which I used to create the required 4 M5 bolts to suspend my generator in the air. So after adding them to the system in addition with some fitting nuts, my thermoelectric generator was basically complete. That means it was time to light up the tea lights, place the generator on top and pour ice water into the box. And as you can see, with this setup, we're getting an output voltage of 5 volts and a short circuit current of 180 milliamps, which actually wasn't that good. But after lowering the heatsink quite a bit and repeating this test, I got better results, which I was okay with. Now, in order to properly charge up a smartphone with a 5 volt input, I still needed to add a buck boost converter between them in order to deliver constant 5 volts. So I added a fitting one to the output of the Peltier modules, adjusted its voltage to 5 volts, and soldered the power wires of a micro USB cable to its output. After then plugging the connector into my phone, we can see that it does in fact charge but it is noteworthy that it only does so with a current of 40 milliamps, which means this system is more for survival situations than anything else. Also, you need to keep the water cold by adding ice to it every now and then. And with that being said, I hope you enjoyed my take on a thermoelectric generator. Now, please do me a favor and don't head over to the Tech Builder channel and hate on him because I think with this video, he already learned his lesson to not publish fake projects anymore. Anyway, as always, don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hitting the notification bell. 
stay creative and I will see you next time.